Five people arrested for suspected corruption and bid rigging in housing estate renovation projects. Central government officials in town to explain decisions of a recent party plenum. Hello and welcome to TVB News. The Independent Commission Against Corruption and Competition Commission have cracked down on a bid rigging syndicate and arrested five people. The ICAC says the arrests are connected to two housing estate renovation projects where corruption is suspected. The projects involve work contracts with a total value of about $140 million. Mimo Singai reports. After their action against a bid rigging syndicate in April, the ICAC and the Competition Commission conducted another joint operation last week against corruption and bid rigging activities carried out by the same syndicate. In the follow up investigation after the April operation, ICAC officers discovered that the syndicate might have bribed members of the owners' corporations of another two housing estates, hoping to obtain two renovation contracts with a total value of $140 million. Sources say the housing estates involved are Neptune Terrace in Taiwan and Hoi Tao Building in Kennedy Town. Meanwhile, Competition Commission looked into the renovation projects of 38 residential estates and industrial buildings, with the total value of the contracts being more than $1 billion. The highest individual contract reaches $260 million. In the operation, five more people were arrested and 22 others were interviewed by authorities, including project contractors, middlemen, members of property management companies and incorporated owners. ICAC and Competition Commission officers also searched 20 premises and seized multiple items from the sites. Speaking to the press today, Bill Ng, principal investigator of the ICAC operations department, said property owners should have a good understanding of how their housing estates are being managed so as to reduce the chance of corruption and bid rigging over the maintenance of the buildings. Numbers 9, TVB News. Macau's president of the Court of Final Appeal, Sam Ho Fai, has resigned from his post. His resignation will take effect on Wednesday. Sam earlier said he would consider running for Macau's chief executive. Macau's chief executive, Ho Yat Singh, today announced that he would remove Sam Ho Fai from his post on his request. The nomination period for the chief executive election starts on Thursday. In Macau, main government and judicial officers must have retired or resigned from their previous jobs before the nomination period. Last Thursday, Sam said he would consider competing for the top position in Macau. Sam was born in mainland China and graduated from the Faculty of Law at Peking University. He was appointed by the chief executive as president of the Court of Final Appeal of Macau in 1999. The city hosted a seminar on promoting the spirit of the third plenary session of the 20th Central Committee of the Communist Party of China today. Held at the Convention and Exhibition Center today, the seminar for promoting the spirit of the third plenary session of the 20th Central Committee of the Communist Party of China featured distinguished guests such as the Vice Chairman of the Constitution and Law Committee of the National People's Congress, Shen Chunyao. Also in attendance were Secretary of the CPC Leadership Group of the Ministry of Commerce, Wang Wentao, and Chief Executive John Lee. Speaking of the seminar today, Chief Executive John Lee noted the spirit of the third plenary session of the 20th Central Committee of the Communist Party of China should be applied to the everyday lives of residents and emphasized the central government's concern for the city. This, as the vice chairman of the NPC's Constitution and Law Committee, said the goal of the plenary session was to implement further reform and push ahead with China's modernization. He also stressed the need for innovation. Shen took the opportunity to point out recent major developments of national security in the city, as well as how the SCR's economy could further improve with economic reform. The secretary of the CPC leadership group of the Ministry of Commerce said Hong Kong plays a special role in the development of the nation and urged the city to further integrate into the overall development of China. Meanwhile, some representatives of the city attending the event spoke about how such reforms could benefit the city in the long term, as well as the implications of the spirit of the session.
With, with the backing of our motherland, uh, Hong Kong can really go forward in a strong way uh, to be a uh, international financial center, logistics center, and also trading center. I think in the near future and also in the distant future, uh, we have to attract more uh, companies to come and settle in Hong Kong and also talent. We have to action and we have to contribute Hong Kong's uh, ability to the future of our country. Timothy Lee, TVB News. Still ahead. Telegram founder Pavel Durov still being detained by French police. Kenneth Chen named vice president of the Chinese University of Hong Kong. And a story about Britain's oldest skydiver. Welcome back. The Russian-born billionaire and owner of social media platform Telegram, Pavel Durov, is still being detained by French police. He was taken into custody at Paris Le Bourget Airport on Saturday after landing in France from Azerbaijan. Durov's platform has allegedly been used for money laundering, drug trafficking and other offenses. Tracy Furness has more. Pavel Durov, a dual citizen of France and Russia, was arrested by the National Anti-Fraud Office, which is attached to the French Customs Department. French prosecutors declined to comment on Durov's arrest, but media reports say the 39-year-old was detained based on allegations that his encrypted platform Telegram has been used for money laundering, drug trafficking and allowing the sharing of content linked to sexual exploitation of minors. Telegram posted that it abides by EU laws and its CEO Durov has nothing to hide. It is absurd to claim that a platform or its owner are responsible for abuse of that platform, the post reads. The arrest drew criticism from Elon Musk, owner of X, who said free speech in Europe was under attack, and a warning from Moscow to Paris that Durov should be accorded his rights. And they highlighted, too, the West's double standards on freedom of speech. Durov left Russia in 2014 after he refused to comply with demands to shut down opposition communities on his VK social media platform, which he later sold. Telegram was founded by Durov and his brother in the wake of the Russian government's crackdown after mass pro-democracy protests that rocked Moscow at the end of 2011 and 2012. Tracy Furness, TVB News. A mainland passenger flying to Hong Kong from Vietnam on board a Hong Kong Express flight was arrested after he was suspected of theft during the flight. The airline reminded passengers to pay extra attention to their belongings. Flight U0561 departed from Da Nang in Vietnam last Saturday evening. The plane landed at Hong Kong International Airport at around 12.30 a.m. Sunday. A 39-year-old male passenger said he discovered he had lost several items while retrieving his luggage on the plane, including a watch worth $330,000 and $5,000 in cash. He immediately contacted flight attendants for assistance. Authorities later found all the lost items in another passenger's luggage and arrested a 57-year-old mainland man. The Council of the Chinese University of Hong Kong today appointed former Secretary General of the Legislative Council Secretariat, Kenneth Chen, as the university's vice president. Chen will commence his three-year term of office on September 16th and handle the administrative resources and operations of CUHK. He graduated with a Bachelor of Science degree in engineering from Princeton University and holds a Master of Science degree from Harvard University. Chen was the Undersecretary for Education from 2008 to 2012 be before serving as the Secretary General of the LegCo Secretariat until earlier this year. He said he is delighted to be able to contribute to the higher education sector in Hong Kong. The hospital authority is going to further enhance the function of its HA Go app. The app allows patients to manage health care more effectively and invite family members as designated carers to view their personal health records. 
to reduce the waiting time of patients at specialist outpatient clinics, the hospital authority launched the HA Go app in 2019. The app has a number of functions, such as a new case booking service, real-time queuing status of the clinic after registration, and payment on the appointment day, mobile payment to avoid queuing, and medication delivery services. The hospital authority says more than 3.35 million people have downloaded the HA Go app as of the second quarter of the year. And according to a hospital authority manager, the app has largely reduced specialist clinics' patients' waiting time. I want to keep the patients not um, staying in our specialist clinic for more than two hours, which is not optimum in the past. But now, they more than 80% of them can achieve um, of this target. A 102-year-old woman in Suffolk, England, has become Britain's oldest skydiver. Danny Jo has the story. It was a most extraordinary birthday celebration. Manette Bailey came up with the idea of skydiving to mark a 102nd birthday after hearing a friend's aged father had done a parachute jump. If an 85-year-old man can do it, so can I, she said. The challenge was nothing new to Bailey, who used to serve in women's royal naval service in Egypt during the Second World War and drove a Ferrari racing car at Silverstone to celebrate 100th birthday. She has received messages of support, including a letter from Prince William. On Sunday morning, a large number of spectators from Suffolk's Benhall Green, where Bailey has lived since 1961, thronged the airfield. With cheers and claps, they watched Bailey jump out of a plane. Upon a successful landing, she was presented with flowers. Well, I feel it's mission accomplished. And I haven't disgraced myself. When the door opened, I thought there's nothing more I can do or say. It's just jump. Bailey's skydive raised nearly 12,000 US dollars for the East Anglian Air Ambulance, Motor Neuron Disease Association, and Benhall Village Hall. She told reporters that her secret to a long and fulfilling life is community, friends, and being among people. Danny Joe, TVB News. That's the news. Thanks for watching. Pearl Magazine is up shortly. Bye for now.